What I got here is the iPad Pro 11, my main editing device over the last 10 days for video and photo. And as you might have seen, I needed to send off my MacBook Pro. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an insight of my first impression, how it is using only an iPad for social content creation or as a content creator. I need to confess, I was a bit worried about coming from a MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop down to an iPad 11 inch. Can the iPad keep up? Can I keep my workflow? Can I keep my editing in DaVinci Resolve? And, and, and. There's been plenty of questions why I was worried about if the iPad can keep up. But before we're diving into the iPad, what I found good and what been maybe still a bit of a struggle, to make you understand why I chose the iPad 11 inch Pro M2 chip over the 12.9 inch M2 chip, my MacBook 16 Pro is a pretty fully specced 16 inch MacBook from 2019 and it still runs fine. It covers all needs I got. It keeps up with all my editing and still edits all my footages or files pretty well, even in 2023. However, I needed to send it off for some maintenance get the fans a bit clean because the device or the laptop did run a bit hot after a short period of time, which left me without any sort of editing device. My old iPad 10.5 inch from 2017 wasn't really an option to do any serious work with. So I needed some sort of editing device. I didn't want to buy a new laptop because I get my laptop back in a couple of weeks. So I did decide to go with the iPad Pro 11 inch M2 chip, 256 gig of storage and eight gigs worth of RAM. And personally, so far the experience been, has been pretty good. And I'm actually a bit mind blown about the iPad and how far the iPad has come. Of course, to make a most out of an iPad, you definitely need some sort of accessories with the iPad, because if you just take the iPad itself, it's not gonna give you the full experience. Right now, if you're looking for some sort of short-term laptop replacement, so I bought the Apple Pen as well for photo editing, which is, a, which is quite a lot of fun to edit with. Right now, if you're in an Affinity Photo and you do some sort of like skin retouching or so, it's definitely worth getting the Apple Pen if you're having an iPad Pro anyway. So definitely recommend it. Second accessory I bought and upgraded was my Apple Mouse. I was not happy with the Apple Mouse anymore. So I chosen the Logitech MX3S. And this probably I should have done way, way earlier because this mouse is incredible and it's so smooth even with the iPad. And so far the experience being smooth. The iPad runs well, the iPad is responsive. Video editing is actually way, way better on the iPad than I thought it would be. All apps open very fast, very quick, very responsive. And if you tweak your settings from your Apple Pen as an example a bit, you got a pretty good experience with the Apple Pen as well. So overall, the experience with the iPad as a main editing device for photo and video over the last 10 days been fantastic. I still had the UHS-2 card reader, which I'm using with the iPad as well. And the transfer speed is pretty good as well. After the iPad got swapped over to a USB-C type adapter now, you have no issues connecting any sort of device to your iPad. You can run SSDs over it, which are pretty fast, but you even, or I even been able to connect my docking station with two times two terabyte hard drives onto the iPad and connect this device to the iPad, access my files, log footage, H.265 footage, and play it back pretty smoothly. What? So this was the biggest point where I was probably most mind blown about it, that I could connect a docking station, two times two terabyte hard drives, onto the Mac or onto the iPad, and play and access all files without any issues. The battery life from your iPad is fantastic. If I got it on full brightness and added a video over, let's say four hours, three, four hours, the battery keeps up and runs, I think on 40% battery left or so. So definitely the battery life from your iPad 11 inch Pro 
is rated to around 10 hours but with heavy use you still get at least five hours out of a battery which I found a very good time amount or, or amount of time because you also could take this iPad with you go out in a cafe sit in a cafe do some editing go over in a park and finish off your editing in a park if you wanted to so overall the experience was pretty good but also when it comes down to data transferring the whole process nowadays is way way easier with the iPad OS as well it's not as complicated anymore you can plug in a SSD and just transfer your data from your iPad over to your SSD or from your SSD over to the iPad but also if you would would use any sort of dongles you could connect several devices or several hard drives to your iPad as well and use it almost like a fully spec laptop and transfer data from this drive over to the other drive or from the other drive over to your MacBook MacBook to your iPad so the whole data transferring is a lot easier than I expected however there are still a few downsides as example if you rendered out a video and you click a video and get more info you don't see all information like you would see on your MacBook like a tucking of a movie is missing and other information are missing when it comes down to this file but also when we're talking about data transferring usually when you use it on a MacBook a window will pop up which tells you how much data is transferred and how long it will roughly take with the iPad it's not as easy you usually get your circle which then fills up until your data is transferred I figured out that when you click this circle you actually get some sort of information how much data will be transferred and you got this line as well which then shows you how much data is transferred so the general use case scenario in transferring data is way way easier than I expected this was probably my main worry to say when I go down to an iPad how can I handle my data but it's really that easy you just plug in your device you jump into in your file manager and then you click on my iPad you click your data you want to transfer you move it over to your SSD and it's really that simple so the overall thoughts and impression from the last 10 days or almost up to two weeks with the iPad Pro been fantastic and I was actually quite happily surprised how easy the iPad is when it comes down to data management photo editing or even video editing could this replace my laptop in the future probably it could to be honest but if you think about the configuration I got right now the M2 chip 256 gigs worth of storage and 8 gigabyte worth of RAM if you want to bump up your RAM you need to bump up your storage to 1 terabyte to get 16 gigabyte worth of RAM and then you buy all the accessories such as like a mouse for 100 quid the pen for 130 quid the iPad itself a keyboard you're coming already into the level of a laptop so I don't know if it's worth specking out an iPad getting all the accessories when you at the same level of a MacBook price then it really depends on what you need if you rather have an iPad the flexibility just to take the iPad with a pen and you go off it's nice lightweight and you can pretty much sit anywhere you want or you need all the connection points you have with a MacBook generally speaking going forward I can see using the iPad way more often than I thought I would of course there are also a few downsides the 11 inch from a size I found a good size when it comes down to photo editing you got enough space on your screen for your pen or to work with the pen do photo editing or anything similar when it comes down to video it's slightly different I think for video the 11 inch is sometimes a bit small so definitely recommended to get 12.9 inch if you're planning on using an iPad as your main device I want to do some video editing so overall I would say if you got an iPad and you're planning on doing more serious work and you got a pretty new-ish iPad there's no reason to buy yourself a laptop get your accessories such as like a mouse the pen a keyboard and you're pretty solid set up for any sort of future content creation if you're new in the market and you don't have either of it no iPad no MacBook then I probably still would go with a MacBook for the connection points for having a card reader for having more connection points on the MacBook itself to connect several different external devices 
So overall my experience being pretty fantastic with the iPad. It runs smooth and overall, yeah, I was happily surprised. So if you've got any further questions, guys, know in the comments, drop them down and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And with that said, like, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff. And I hope you found this video good, informative, and you got out of it what you needed. And with that said, I'm gonna see you, my friend, very soon in another video. Cheers, mate.